Welcome to another episode of Millennial Investing Explained. Here's today's question. I want to talk about how and why the current student loan crisis came to be. Studying student loans and working with thousands of people with student loan debt, how do we end up in the current situation we are in with regards to student loans? Yeah, just unlimited borrowing for school. You have the ability to borrow anything you want starting in 2006. So there's no longer any underwriting at all. You can borrow for any degree as much as the school asks you to borrow. You can borrow for living expenses. You can borrow for covering family expenses if you have kids. You can borrow up to the cost of attendance, and the school can inflate that in cost of attendance by adding on ridiculous fees and unnecessary expenses on top of tuition as well. So that, in my view, is what really caused the horrendous student loan crisis. Like There would have been a student loan crisis in general because the value of higher education had been going up for so long. The schools were basically just interested in capturing some of that. Right. If you think about like any kind of business out there that helps you get more money, like what do people do a lot of the time? Right. Like hedge fund investors, like that's where two and 20 came from is because they're helping people be so much more successful. So they want to capture some of those extra gains for their own profit. Right. So honestly, universities started to act, in my opinion, a little bit more like corporations and hedge funds than actual not for profit institutions. And the government enabled this by throwing gasoline onto the fire and the gasoline was uncapping borrowing in the mid 2000s and so that's where you see student loans going from about 300 billion which is still a large amount but you could argue that that debt would be classified for most people as good debt because that's debt that's funding you know a valuable education that's has higher returns than ever right Whereas now we have this 1.6 trillion in debt and you have a lot of really questionable degrees being funded. And a lot of it is degrees that are legitimate, but are just frankly vastly overpriced. So, you know, you'll have all of these online degrees from regional state schools, you know, MBA programs, for example. And is an online MBA from a regional state school worth 10 to 20 grand per year? Absolutely not. Right. In most cases, it's probably worth, I don't know, a few thousand bucks. Yet we're having situations where schools are charging 10x that and people are just paying it because you can get such easy access to credit. What happened in 2006? There was just this program called Grad Plus. So Grad Plus got passed this type of loan and Congress passed it. And uh, you know, in 2007, they passed IBR. And so it was kind of a vicious cycle because if you have Grad Plus, you have unlimited borrowing, but then they had no way to pay based on income. So they had all these defaults, right? Because you can have all this debt, but you can't have a way to pay it back. And so in 2007, then they passed IBR, which really didn't get installed until 2009. And so it's interesting because this huge amount of debt they got passed, the question was not how can we help people pay this back? They just, just said, let's have, uh, you know, IBR is the solution because if people can pay based on their income, they're not defaulting. Well, that's kind of a silly metric for success. Why should we be measuring success as people not defaulting? Like that's, you know, that's kind of a ridiculous metric, right? If you think about it, like not defaulting is an awful metric. Like can you imagine, you know, the metric of success for an investment that somebody made being that, you know, they didn't default in the loan that they used to buy their rental. Like, is that a successful investment? No, it's, it could be a really terrible investment. You just happen to suck it up and deal with your mistake, right? But uh, so I don't know. I just think it's just a perfect storm of problems. That's all for this episode of Millennial Investing Explained. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or subscribe to our YouTube channel to get even more free content.